Joining me now is our International Affairs Editor, Armin, Ed, um, Armin George. And Armin, we now have partial results from the Electoral Commission as well as the official turnout. So what do you make of these figures? Well, let's take the result for Daniel Ortega himself. Uh, the Election, election Commission saying that he got 75% of the votes. Uh, that's on, on partial results still. Now, uh, if you go back to 2016, Annette, uh, Ortega was declared the winner with just over 72% of the vote. So on the face of it, he's increased his vote, and yet the economic situation in the country by several indicators has actually got worse since uh, the 2016 election, GDP growth, consumption, investment investment and so forth. Uh, so in that context, it's pretty striking that, according to the Election Commission, he's actually got more votes this time round than in 2016. If we look at the turnout, again, uh, figures from the Electoral C Commission puts turnout at 65 percent. Uh, bear in mind that international observers from the EU and the Organization of uh, American States were not allowed to observe these elections. However, an NGO uh, called Urnas Abiertas did uh, manage to deploy observers. They've tweeted this. Uh, a, a little while ago, uh, so they had 500. They observed 563 polling stations, uh, and they have more than 1,000 uh, observers. I'm not sure how they managed to get the, the, that into place, but they're uh, reporting a minimum abstention of 79%, maximum abstention of 84%. So very different picture there from the official line. How do you think the international community is likely to handle Ortega in light of this result? Well, I think the EU and the US both have a very similar approach. So far, they've had targeted sanctions against individuals, so the classic mix of travel bans and asset freezes. Uh, the choice they have is either to continue with those you know, uh, relatively limited measures, which have not deterred Ortega, obviously, or to broaden sanctions, uh, which would hurt the Nicaraguan population as a whole and potentially increase the uh, exodus of migrants. And already, if we look at a graphic of those who've tried to reach uh, the US border, uh, we, will, we can see that uh, between January and August of 2021, uh, the US authorities intercepted 41,500 Nicaraguans. Compare that to the same period in 2020, just 1,100 Nicaraguan nationals intercepted by US authorities, an absolutely massive increase if the US, the EU or others puts this, really puts the screws on, really squeezes the Nicaraguan economy, presumably we're going to see a much bigger exodus. That would have consequences for Costa Rica as well, which already has very large numbers of Nicaraguans living there. So uh, no particularly good option for the international community at this point. Abin Georgian, thank you.